Dutch President Macri. Nice to see you again. I'm very happy that you, you, you came back to Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having us back, and thank you for having us here to Olivos, the presidential residence. It's an honor to be here with you. I expect that you feel at home. I do. I do. Uh, and because I feel uh, so at home, uh, I will begin by asking you about uh, what we will see tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, the country will be paralyzed uh, in some respects by a national strike. National strike, yes. Maybe. And uh, as you know, the rest of the world thought that you were leading Argentina out of its populist past. This looks very much like populism. What happened? Well, we are leading Argentina towards uh, be a, a predictable and reliable country, but still there are minorities that, that they think that maybe any past time was better. So that in the process of a cultural change as we are involved, we still have minorities that are thinking that in the past things were better. No? But, the important thing is what happened on Saturday, in which, in a spontaneously way, hundreds, thousands of people went out of their homes in, around the whole country to express that they really believe in what we are doing, that they want to be live in democracy and they want to change, they want to modernize the country, they want to be part of the world, they want to have an intelligent approach to to be part of the globalization and so we are we are feeling a, a great support from the citizens and looking around what is going on not only in the region in the whole world in, in the 21st century with democracies i think that we we are quite a unique case you know, because we are doing enormous transformations and still we are having very big support in the citizens. That shows that what we are doing is not our decision. It's the decision of the majority of, of the citizens of Argentina. That, that they decided to capitalize all the learnings that we have in the last decades of failures. No? As we both know that support will be tested six months from now when you have midterm elections. In the meantime, these national strikes pose some practical obstacles. How do you accelerate growth? How do you effect reform? How do you add seats in Congress if labor unions can bring business to a standstill and hurt the economy? No, but let me tell you that they are doing this national strike tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we have been working together in every, not every, but in many sectors to create new, not only labor, new regulatory frameworks together, unions, companies, government, local governments, and national government. And we succeed in, we have a tremendous success in, in strategic matters like energy with Baca Muerta, that is a huge shale, shale gas reserve that we have that will allow us to, in, in, in a period of five years, recover our s local production and will relieve us from importing huge amounts of gas, especially in winter. And we will be in conditions to export gas and will to be a big worldwide player in energy uh, matters, together with renewables that we have launched uh, a couple of tenders that have been very successful and we are receiving investments of around five billion dollars in this first stage. We are, there are coming future tenders and we are going to in increase that maybe four times more. And the same we did in terms of agreement with the unions in the automobile industry in which we are create, we're going to create more than 35,000 jobs. We are doing the same agreement in mining. We did the same agreement in construction. We are work, working in communication. So it's, it's quite a, a, a typical situation of a, a, a moment of big change in a the country. There are unions that are working 
in the future and there are others in which they're trying to stuck to the past. No? Well, people are naturally impatient, aren't they? In, in every part of the world, especially in the 21st century in which we have uh, access to so such a huge amount of information. No? And in many times that drives you crazy, drives the society crazy. No? But still, let me tell you, Eric, we had been taking hard decisions. And I, I have the pain in myself taking those decisions. For example, like increasing tariffs so as to create a space for new investment, so better services without energy. For example, a country cannot grow. No? And Argentina was going, getting out of energy. And still, the citizens understand that this is a path. This is a, a journey to the future. And changes cannot be done from one day to, to the next day, no? from tomorrow to today to to tomorrow. Uh, so we, we need to be patient, we need to work, we need to understand that this is a process and that we are improving day by day. That's the, the real thing in Argentina and the good news in Argentina, that we have a long way to run, but, but we are improving day by day. You're worried about the long term, and perhaps you should be. But let's talk about the short term for a moment. You promised your fellow countrymen growth. And growth has materialized, but it hasn't materialized as fast as they would have liked to see and you would have liked to see. So if the economy doesn't accelerate starting in the second half of this year, what's plan B? No, the, the, we are working in plan A. Argentina, after five years of zero growth, zero creation of, of new employments is in the last seven months we have been creating new jobs, formal jobs. Mm -hmm. And we are starting to grow. I, I understand what you're saying because I'm People want also, to see results. <laughs> I, I, I need to, to, to see results because you too. I, I care about what happens with my, my citizens. I care about what happens with the, the whole Argentina. And I know that the growth has is affecting certain regions of the country, a sector, cer certain sectors of the economy, but not in a whole, because this is a process. So the good news is we are already growing, so we change the tendency. Okay, Now Argentina is growing back after five years, but still it's not enough. We need to accelerate this growth, and we need to keep growing for a couple of decades to finally uh, really make a, a, a result in terms of reducing poverty. Of course. Is there anything you can do to accelerate the growth in the short term? Do you have any tools that you can use beyond what you've already no, done? It's what we are doing, creating trust. So there is no plan B, really? Create, no, there's no plan B. We have to continue creating trust every day in every decision that we take as, as a country, as a whole society. We, we have to keep discussing, having spaces of dialogue with the, with the different sectors to create better tools, better re regulatory frameworks in which we can develop in, in a better way uh, th those activities bringing in new investments and that's what we are doing every day but it's a process you can change 15 years in 15 months that's a magician you have to go to las vegas and watch copperfield here we are working <laughs> we are a, 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 a team of in the government together with the majority of the citizens of argentina working together in building the country that we deserve and that we expect it. Mr. President, growth, as you know, has a direct impact on the budget. Yeah. Uh, you have already had to raise the primary deficit target to about 3.2% of GDP. Is that a number investors can take to the bank, or is there a risk, if growth doesn't accelerate, that you're going to have to raise that target again? No, no, no. I think that we, we are in, in a good process, and we were going to achieve all the goals that we had committed and, 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 and really, and really uh, con with a great confidence in what we are doing. The, um, and I speak, of course, of 2018. People seem pretty comfortable with the path that you're on for 2017. This year, 
and last year you used revenue mm -hmm. from the tax amnesty to tax help amnesty. finance yes. that budgetary no. shortfall. Next year you won't have it. So how do you close the gap? Well, that's you are you're raising a good point. That's we need to uh, go in a deepen and fasten capability of creating dialogue spaces in the society. So we sat down the politics, the, the, the business community, the, the provinces, and find out how we are going to cut the deficit. That is the challenge that we have. And we are. So we you're know, talking about cutting costs here. You're talking about cutting potentially government jobs. You're talking about. No, we're talking about how we are going to create a budget in which uh, we, we will show that what we had committed in terms of, of fiscal deficits annually, in annually basis, uh, basis mm -hmm. uh, go, was going to be reduced, we are, we are achieving that. No, we, we, have to we have to achieve what we have committed. So how do you do it? Well, how do you cut those costs? Well, that's why I'm, I'm waiting for having a, a, a deeper discussion with all the, the different sectors in which we are going to find out the way in which accelerating growth, but also reducing state costs, we, we will achieve the fiscal deficit that we had committed. What about the peso? The strong peso is having a depressing effect on the economy. Exports aren't as competitive if the peso is strong. The farmers, as you know, sit on stockpiles of grain. Cheap imports discourage local production. Wouldn't it help if you had a weaker currency? But that's fully related with the fiscal deficit. Is we are financing the fiscal deficit, bringing in dollars. Obviously, in a flotation exchange market, you will have. The more you borrow, the more you borrow, more dollars come in. You lower the, the, the dollar local price. No, so that's why we need to reduce the fiscal deficit. There's no other way. In a perfect world, you would have less inflation, you would have lower interest rates, you would have a weaker peso, and you would have stronger growth, but you can't have them all at the same time. Is, let me ask it this way, what's more important right now? Stimulating growth or fighting inflation? You have to do both things at the same time. There's no other way. With lower inflation, we have bigger chances to grow. And you are defending the salary value of, of, of the, the workers. And that's my main uh, compromise. I need to defend the, the salary of the, of the workers. But at the same, and that, that's reducing inflation. Reducing inflation will accelerate growth because you, you will give more uh, certainty to those ones that have to invest that you are fulfilling what you, you had committed. But what about that six month period between now and October when everybody has to make a decision about how they feel? How rich do they feel? How much money is there in their pocket? Are their wages rising? Are they getting good jobs? The wages are going to rise with the new negotiations and together with the reduction in inflation that we are going to have uh, in, in the rest of the year, they will feel that they, or they will uh, they, they will assume and they will see that they will have a, a more, more capability of purchasing goods. And that will be something very good for everybody and that will affect their humor. The mid, these midterm elections that we're talking about in October will undoubtedly be a referendum on your government. That's how these yes. things tend to yes. work. Um, obviously, you want Cambiemos, your political alliance, to win as many seats as possible. I think that that uh, goes without saying. But I would like to know this. What, how many seats, what percentage of the Congress do you need to have for you to call that election a win? I'm quite confident, confident that we are going to win the election. But that will win a not majority? Be will be the first minority. But even if we, if we have a great, great result, let's say the majority, that will not be enough to have the majority at the Congress because we are starting for a very low yes. situation. No? So we are going to improve. 
we are going to have maybe 20% more seats, but those, that, those figures will not be enough to be, have the majority at the Congress. But that, in one sense, will demand that we continue creating the dialogue spaces, and that's something very, very uh, uh, great for, for our future, because we need to understand that confrontation is not the way to solve the problems in Argentina. So if you win less than 20% more, is that a disappointment? Is that a failure? If we don't win the election, it will be a failure. But I'm, I'm really very optimistic in that the, our citizens will, will back up these reforms that we have started. Cristina Fernandez, your predecessor as president, as you know, remains a very polarizing figure in this country. Many people think she should be in prison. Others would like to see her run for elected office in October. What would you prefer? Whatever she prefers. I don't care. She has to uh, fulfill the requirements of the justice in all the, 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 the suits that she's facing. And if she wants to be candidate, she can be candidate. Here's how I look at it. If she's prosecuted and incarcerated, that demonstrates to Argentines and to the rest of the world that this country is serious about fighting corruption. That's good for you. Yes. However, if she runs and she continues to be a divisive figure and she divides your opponents, the Peronists, that's also good for you. But one has to be better than the other. Which is it? First. Both be better that she better that she be in both, prison. Both no, no, both situations don't depend on me. I know that. So, I'm I'm working for have for creating or helping to consolidate and, and have stronger institutions in Argentina. Of course. So I want an independent justice, as you mentioned before. If we can show that we have independence. In, in, in the daily action of our justice, that will be something very good for Argentina, Argentina's future. But at the same time, you want to win the election. No, no, and I, if she divides no, her opponents, I, I'm, that helps. I believe in what we are doing. We don't depend on what Cristina does or any other politician does. We depend on what we are working, in which, in which we, are, we are working Precisely. every day. Precisely. You have so, to play the cards so, you're dealt. So I, I need to continue working and to be focused <laughs> in solving the problems of my citizens and demonstrating that this is the way to the future. And I don't care what they, they do. They have to fulfill the role of opposition and do what they, they think and defend the ideas that they believe. I believe in other ideas. And I believe that Argentina has a great future if we find if we find our role in the globalization in the global scenario, and if we if we keep creating clear rules, stable on time, be reliable, fulfill our word, that will create a future for our people, jobs, and with jobs we will reduce poverty. Let's talk about that bigger picture. There's a growing sense that democracy in Latin America is fragile. Look what's happening in Paraguay, for example. Look what's happening in Venezuela, even Brazil. Is there a bigger role for you and for Argentina to play as a stabilizing force in this region? Argentina has a role to fulfill in the region and in the world. The world has always been waiting for Argentina. And this is the time to show that all what we can do, all what we are capable of creating, and also showing a way to the future based in the values that we have been discussing, no? respecting the laws, the institutions, democracy, and real democracy, not what we have in Venezuela. That's not democracy. What is it? Is it a dictatorship? This is a dictatorship that doesn't respect any human rights. Nicolás Maduro prison, is a dictator. Oh, ab absolutely. Having politicians that of the, of the opposition in jail without any charges, real charges. Okay. So what do you do about that? I know you care about Venezuela. Is it we, time, for example, to kick them out of Mercosur? Well, we have done a, a great advance last weekend with the, the, the four countries of Mercosur. We have write down a, 
uh, communication in which we are demanding for elections to release the, the, the political prisoners, to respect the independence of, 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 of the justice and the Congress. And so I think that we are pushing all in the right direction for the first time in a very clear way and the same in, in, the, in the American organization, right, in which they have also issued a, a, a communication. The Organization of American organizations States. Organizations of American States. But yes. these are just words. They're not actions yet. Well, what action is, what else you can do? Well, you can kick Venezuela out of Mercosur. Well, we are in the, we are, he, they are already suspended. They are already suspended. So that's enough? No, it's never enough. We have to keep battling in favor of our dear Venezuelans that are suffering the consequences of this disaster. Next, uh, not next month, this month, in fact, you'll be traveling to Washington to yes. meet President Trump. April 27th, correct? Yes. You'll see him at the White House? At the White House. What's on the agenda? Discussing about the future relations between both countries. What we talk on the phone is that he believes that we have, what we have started uh, with uh, the Obama administration is, is a, the base, in, and we, we should believe in that we, we have a space to deepen our relations and find out uh, ways of mutual be benefit in, in future corporations. He is a protectionist. You are a free trader. I'm not. I would not say I'm free trader. I, I believe in globalization, and uh, and I believe that we, we we can find ways of increasing the relations between Argentina and the states a lot because we have very weak relations. On what basis? Where does Argentina fit in an America First foreign policy? Well, first I think that in spite of what we can talk in terms of a direct relation between Argentina and the States, we have to talk between Mercosur and the United States, no? So I think that there is... So you need to have a united front? We need because we are members of Mercosur. So we are going to work together in that future relation. And I expect that, to, that we will find ways to improve and, and, and increase our, our commercial relations together with, with any other spaces of cooperation, you know? for example, against the, the, the drug trafficking, against terrorism, and, and, and in favor of peace. There are many ways in which we can cooperate. But there are many ways in which you can compete as well. America wants some of the same export markets that you want. Well, that, that happens always, you know? but let's say that we, we can focus first in, in, in which areas we can be complementary, and then when comp to compete, uh, there's always time. No? <laughs> President Macri, I want to thank you again for having us here to Argentina, having us to your presidential residence. Olivos, it's a pleasure to see you again. No, my pleasure, Eric. And I expect that you have time to go around the city or visit another part of Argentina. I certainly hope so, and we'd love to see you in New York City.